There are some references that suggest that the Mahdi shall actually reconquer Jerusalem. However, as we pointed out, these references have weakness in them. And this is the same hadith that we said that is in the Sunan of At-Tirmidhi, in which the Prophet ﷺ said that a group of people will come from the place of Khorasan that shall carry black flags as their banners. Nothing will prevent them, nothing will be able to stop them until they plant these flags at Elia. And Elia is one of the names of Jerusalem. So as we said, this hadith is weak because it has in it Rishteen ibn Sa'd and scholars of hadith, the famous ones, including Yahya ibn Ma'in, Imam Ahmad, and even Imam al-Tirmidhi who reported this hadith, he hinted at its weakness. Also, the hadith does not mention the Mahdi by name, but it does mention the black flags, which, as we said, is one of the signs of the Mahdi, and Allah knows best. So this hadith has a slight weakness in it. Therefore, as we said, weak hadith, we cannot base our aqidah on them. However, at the same time, there is no harm in narrating these ahadith and mentioning that they are weak, and Allahu a'lam whether this is true or not. We cannot state so for certain. However, there is a possibility that it might be true as well. There are other ahadith which indicate that the Mahdi will conquer Constantinople. In a hadith reported in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, Abu Huraira narrated that the Prophet wasallam said, the day of judgment shall not happen until the Romans camp at a place called Al-A'maq or in another narration he said Dabiq which is a place in Syria and there shall come to meet them to fight them an army from Medina and they shall be of the best of the people of the earth at that time on that day. They shall be the best inhabitants of earth when they line up in ranks to fight each other. The Romans will say to them, so picture the scene now. The Romans are lined up, the Muslims from Medina. And by the way, this is another reference, even though it is not explicit, that the Mahdi will be from Medina and Allah knows best. And so the Romans will say to them, leave us and the people whom you took as prisoners from us. We are going to fight them. So notice now, and this is a very interesting hadith and a lot of interpretation has gone into it from the scholars. And as we said, it is in Sahih Muslim, so there is no doubt as to its authenticity. They will say to the Muslims, leave us fight those whom you took as prisoners from amongst us. Why would they want to fight their own people? The Muslims will respond, la wallahi, no, we swear by Allah, we will never hand you over our brothers. This is why the people are Muslims now. So look, something would have happened before this time, before we go to the hadith, we explain this phrase. Something has happened, and this is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, but because it's not related to the Mahdi, we will not go into too much detail, but apparently there will be a lot of converts from amongst the Romans. And many of these converts would have been taken prisoners before, and they would have eventually accepted Islam. When they accept Islam, they are now lining up with the Muslims against their own people, against the Romans. And the Romans are saying, leave us fight. They are now angry at their own people who have left the religion. Leave us to fight our own people whom you took as prisoners of war. The Muslims will say, no, we will never, by Allah, we swear by Allah, abandon our brothers, ikhwanana. So they will fight, the Romans and the Muslims, they will fight. And a third of them, of the Muslims, will abandon, they will flee. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah will never forgive them. A third of them will die. The Prophet ﷺ said they will be the best of the shuhada in the sight of Allah and a third of them will be victorious. So two thirds of the army will either be abandoned or die. Only one third will actually live through this battle. The Prophet ﷺ said they shall never be tested after this again. So the test that they had to undergo was so severe they would never be tested after them. And he said they will then conquer Constantinople. فَيَفْتَتَحُونَ قُسْطَنْطِنِيَّةِ قُسْطَنْطِنِيَّةِ is the Constantinople, which in our times is called Istanbul. Now, this hadith might be problematic in the sense that, well, we've already conquered Constantinople and this didn't occur at the time of the conquering of Constantinople. However, as the scholars have said of our times and even in the last few hundred years, that was the first capturing of Constantinople and that was when it was changed from Constantinople to Istanbul. There shall be a second conquering of Constantinople. There shall be another conquering where Istanbul will be returned to the hands of real Muslims. And this is the conquering that is being referred to in this hadith. And the Prophet ﷺ also said, when they are distributing the booty, having hung their swords upon the trees of Zaytun, of olive trees, Shaytan will cry out in their midst that the Dajjal has appeared in your families. 
so that Dajjal has appeared where you left, where you thought that he would never appear, in your own families. So they would go out returning back and they will find that this is a lie. They will then go to Syria and while they are getting ready to prepare for battle, while they are lining up in rows, the time for prayer will come. So they will stand to pray and Isa ibn Maryam will come down and he shall lead them. When Isa comes down and the Dajjal sees him, the Prophet ﷺ said, he will dissolve just like salt dissolves in water. And if they were to leave him, in other words, if they were to leave the Dajjal, he will have died by his own self when he sees Isa, but they will not let him die. And Allah will kill the Dajjal through the hands of Isa. In other words, Isa will kill the Dajjal and Isa will show the blood of Dajjal on his spear, on his sword that he has. So this beautiful hadith in Sahih Muslim, which really we can talk a lot about, but it hints, it doesn't say explicitly, it hints that the army that conquers Constantinople will then go on to Syria and when they are lining up in rows, Isa ibn Maryam will come down and the Mahdi is the Imam of the Muslims. So this is a hint or a reference to the fact that the same army that Isa descends upon will be the army that conquers Constantinople. And how will it conquer Constantinople? Other ahadith tell us when they are waiting outside of Constantinople, when they have surrounded it, when they have laid siege to the city, they shall not be able to attack it, it will be too fortified for them and then they will conquer it not by feet of arms, not through strength, not through power. They will merely say Allahu Akbar and the takbir and the tahleel and the tasbih. They will do dhikr of Allah. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, subhanallah. The entire Muslim army will be doing this dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the entire fortress of Constantinople will collapse and they will be able to enter the city and then conquer it. So they shall conquer it not through strength of arms, but through strength of iman and dhikr in Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And this is a implicit reference. As we said, we cannot state so for certain that the Mahdi shall be in that army. And in fact, if he is there, then he will be leading the army and it will be he, inshallah, who shall reconquer Constantinople and return it to the rule of the Muslims. And it is apparent, and this is something that is authentically narrated in Bukhari and Muslim, that the Dajjal will appear and Isa will appear during the reign of the Mahdi. In fact, the most authentic hadith about the Mahdi reported in Bukhari and Muslim is the hadith reported by Abu Hurairah in which he says that the Prophet said, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ ابْنُ مَرْيَمَ فِيكُمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How will you be when Jesus Christ, when the son of Mary, when the son of Maryam descends amongst you and your leader will be one of you? This is the only hadith that is muttafaq alayh and that without a doubt refers to the Mahdi. Although it doesn't mention him by name, however, we know for a fact and we'll mention some other hadith and other references that this Imam that the Prophet ﷺ is talking about is none other than the Mahdi himself. He is telling us a day will come when Jesus Christ himself will come down and your leader will be one of you. You will have a leader that is worthy of being a leader and Isa ibn Maryam will pray behind him. Your Imam will be amongst you. He will come and pray behind this Imam. So this hadith is muttafaq alayh. Now there are other hadith which are muttafaq alayh which refer to the Mahdi but not as explicit as this one. Of them is the hadith of the army that shall be destroyed outside of Mecca. We mentioned that there is pretty much no doubt that this hadith applies to the Mahdi. However, it doesn't really refer to him. On the other hand, this narration is pretty explicit that there will be an Imam from amongst you. So the word Mahdi does not appear in Bukhari and Muslim, but there are explicit and implicit references in Bukhari and Muslim to the Mahdi. According to another narration which might have some weakness in it, there is an added wording that this shall be at the Fajr prayer. So when the Muslims have lined up for Fajr, at some day in the future, they have lined up to pray Fajr. The armies have lined up and they're about to fight the enemies of Allah. At this point in time, right before the prayer starts, Isa alayhi salam will come down in front of the Muslims. They shall look up and they shall see him descending, being carried by two angels, one on each side of his. He will have one hand wrapped around one angel and the other hand wrapped around the other angel. And of course, the time of Fajr is the time that Allah sends blessings down to this earth. It is a time of optimism. It's a new day, a new dawn. And that is why at this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send Isa ibn Maryam down. The point is the Prophet ﷺ predicted that the Muslims shall be united under one Imam, one leader, and that Isa ibn Maryam will come down and he, this Imam, shall lead us and him in this prayer. Now Isa alayhi salam, when will he come? 
He will come after the coming of Dajjal. Therefore, this necessitates that the Mahdi shall be present during the time of the Dajjal. In fact, another hadith in Sahih Muslim hints that the Mahdi shall be around before the Dajjal declares he is the Dajjal. And a false alarm will be raised. Remember the hadith of, that we just quoted of the fact that they're going to surround Constantinople and the shaitan will cry out to them that the Dajjal is here. They will go back to their houses and they will find that this is a lie. So the Dajjal has not yet been seen. The shaitan will scare them. Therefore, when the Dajjal is seen, obviously these people are there. So the Mahdi will be around before the coming of the Dajjal and the Dajjal shall appear in his time.